I have a very small Eastern musk turtle. Right now he's about the size of a quarter. Isn't he adorable? This is, and I have had this guy, he's at least six months old. It's time that he gets his own tank worthy of this gorgeous creature. So come along with me, Susie Q. Hey. Welcome to Q Aquatics and Exotics. My name's Susie, and today I'm going to be making a turtle palindarium from my gorgeous Eastern musk turtle. It's also known as a Sternotherus odoratus, like very odorous. <laughs> because some people think it stinks, otherwise known as the stink pot turtle. I happen to enjoy the scent. And this turtle happens to be native all over the eastern part of the United States. And they are little feisty little creatures. Let me tell you, this turtle kind of acts like he's a little tiny snapping turtle. Like he is, neck will shoot right out and turn around and try to bite. So this, this is a very good turtle because it stays small. It's just very hard to buy a turtle like this because this, the laws, the federal law says it has to be four inches in order to sell, which would be a full grown musk turtle. Now, just because this makes it a perfect size for a pet turtle, he's gonna live up to 50 years old. So you wanna keep that in mind when you're getting a turtle as a pet, that this is a lifetime pet. If not, who's gonna take care of this turtle after I'm gone? I know it's a morbid thought for some, but I wanna be practical. I don't want something, I don't want have an animal that nobody wants like Mr. Peabody. No, I won't say that. <laughs> now these are absolutely aquatic turtles. They bask here and there but I have the terrarium part of it just in case he wants to come up on the land. A lot of times they're at night they'll come up and explore the land. Pretty nocturnal. I have a lot of plants inside this aquarium because not only for decoration and filtration of the water, but they'll also munch on some of the uh, aquatic plant life. And I'm okay with that. It's like their salad. I'll just keep getting more. But right now he's quite tiny. He would much prefer to stay in his tank and enjoy his enclosure and all the things and all the different pieces of enrichment that I put in throughout the enclosure than for me pulling him out and holding him. He's not a cuddly kind of pet. And the reason why I have no problems with him being in this kind of shallow water is because they're not really super strong swimmers. So at any point throughout this aquarium, he can reach his head up, stand up on a log, rocks, bridge. I've got things all throughout the whole, the whole aquarium for him to hide behind, step up onto, or come right out of the water and bask. And even though he spends most of his time in the water, I want to make sure he, there's plenty of places for him to come out totally, bask, get dried off if he prefers, or climb in the dirt, dig down. If I'm using tap water, I make sure I dechlorinate it. Although the water's room temperature, I do have the heating bulb, the basking bulb, the UVB light, all everything on top, so that if he wants to come out and bask, and there's UVB light in front of everything. Now, it is right in front of a diffused window, I do not count on the UVB of anything because it, it's going through the, the glass window. So it kind of takes away any UVB, but it does give the plants a lot of light. Now this is an omnivore, so I can I feed him. He loves these freeze-dried freeze blood worms. He also likes to eat, I go through all different kinds of food. He likes, he likes these little floating food sticks because he likes to go to the surface. And a lot of times I get pinhead crickets. I get pinhead crickets and put them in the water. They'll walk to the basking area. They'll like float over to the basking area in trees. They can't get out of the aquarium, but he can get to the surface and grab them. But he eats all different kinds. And most of my animals in here gets a salad in the morning. So I will throw a leaf like a uh, mustard green, some kind of dark green in there. I've never seen him eat that. I usually end up taking it out the next day, but I leave it in there just in case he wants to eat that instead of my aquatic plants. If he wants to eat the aquatic plants, have at it. It's your salad, bud. And like I said, I do, I do handle my musk turtle when I'm doing a check, a wellness check. I'm checking his shell to make sure there's no um, shell rot on it. And if you do find shell rot, I've got a video up here on how to treat your turtle with shell rot. 
I also check his eyes for clarity, make sure everything is doing good, and then I put him back. I, I don't like to torture him too much. And when I'm handling him, he's not happy. Adorable, but not happy. So yeah, very, very adorable turtles. I've had him, I've had him inside with another baby uh, yellow belly slider. And they got along just fine. The yellow belly slider though has, he's grown so much faster than the mud turtle, than my musk turtles, that the yellow belly has to go in another enclosure. So I knew it was time for my musk turtle to get her own palindarium. I'm gonna do a video on my top five turtles and I guarantee you this Eastern musk turtle is gonna be in the top five. Let's take a look at the palindarium. I got this enclosure on my way back from Aquashella. I really like it. It's gonna have maybe six inches of water underneath. I've got this piece that I have been saving for just the right setup, and I think this is just the right setup. I'm also going to have a whole lot of plants, aquatic plants on the bottom, and some what you might call terrestrial plants, which is good. And some of the terrestrial plants that I have for, been saving for this project are some ferns, because this is going to be a very humid enclosure. So this tank does have a little drain hole. But I, I think it's watertight. Don't think I checked it. You always want to check it outside. But for me to ask John to take this outside, to put water in it, to test it, to bring it back inside, because with one hand I cannot do it, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen today. So I want to get this going. I'm going to have faith that it holds water. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do This got warped in the sun, so I'm going to have to unwarp it. And since it's going to go on here, I am thinking I will put this, a little silicone this to this. But this is what my plan is. Let me get started. So when I got this aquarium, I knew I wanted a platform to keep the terrestrial plants up out of the water. So I just wanted to make some pillars. Now my local fish store has these pillars that they handmade for their uh, Diamondback Terrapins in their store. And it was just a plastic cylinder filled with pebbles, silicone down to the bottom. I'm going to take this, cut it to five inches. I'll make four or five of them, fill them with sand or gravel, and use these as the pillars. And it, the pebbles actually made this uh, plastic tube much stronger. So I thought that was a great idea. So I purchased... Um, this plastic cylinder and it's been up on top on my supply shelf just waiting for me just waiting for the right moment so I have these glued down I'm gonna add some stone to them let me sweep up what I spilled yeah I silicone those down plugged it up on the bottom of this tank as a plug and I and then I set down this clay gravel that I wanted to use. This clay, it's like a clay gravel, what I use for, it's for uh, aquatic plants out in my ponds. And I knew even if you chomped on them, they, they crush right up. No. And I just, I just love this uh, substrate. It's very similar to, I don't want to even talk about it, but that's what this substrate is. It's a, it's a small clay substance that is used for aquatic plants and ponds and things like that. But I also wanted some aquatic soil. So I got another inch big platform that uh, I got some moss in at one time. I save everything, especially for these kind of builds. Okay, this is the drainage layer. I'm gonna put aquatic soil in there and then topped it off with these clay pellets for a little extra nutrition for some of my uh, new plants that I got. There we go. And then I'm going to top it off with clay after I plant my stuff. And this is going to have aquatic plants. Up here I'm going to have a little shelf of some other plants. I'll have a drip system going on. And I think the tray will come right to here. If not, this can push out so that this can act as a ledge to get right up. So I just pour this in. Gently. Okay. And then this. 
So, and I built this with this beautiful tree trunk in here. And as I started filling with water, I added the dechlorinator and I waited and all of a sudden it started leaking. And I couldn't tell where it was leaking because I already put the gravel in. So this tank does have a little drain hole, but I, I, I think it's watertight. So I am draining all the water out. This is a fail because this leaks. It is leaking and this sucks. So let me rewind, tear everything down, start all over again. The plug that came with this was not very secure, so I just siliconed everything shut using 100% using silicone. And once this is cured, it took about 24 hours to get cured, it's fish safe. There's no additives in there. And I prefer a tube like this when I'm doing small jobs, as opposed to using silicone that would be in a gun, which you absolutely can use, but this would have been a waste of, I didn't want to get a whole big thing when I only needed a small tube of it. I siliconed the plug, re-siliconed in the pillars, put the rocks in and be this time when I put the water in I didn't put the gravel in first I was able to see underneath and my shelf underneath is covered in a marine vinyl which is perfect because it's waterproof and I don't have to worry about the wood getting wet but even if it did get wet this tank is actually sitting on the frame of my shelf not the wood but I still don't want it to get wet so I covered it in marine vinyl now, if you're interested in these kind of videos, check out my playlist. I've got a lot of different kinds of videos on how to get set up with axolotls, how to cycle an aquarium, gravel vacuuming versus how do you clean a tank that's a sand bottom. I've got tons of videos out there, and if you like what you see, go ahead and hit subscribe. That will help me out tremendously. Back to my turtle palindarium. So now that I know it wasn't leaking, now I added back in my substrate. And I also have some more wood soaking you want to see them so here in my biotope i've got two pieces of wood that i thought were absolutely fascinating and they're up here soaking because they're going to go underwater so we'll have underwater wood above ground wood and here are some of the plants that would be going in there these are some of the plants i got from my new turtle terrarium and i'm very excited Look at how beautiful those uh, Anubis, Boos, Microswords, Crips. Got a lot of really amazing plants in here that I can't wait to get set up. Okay, this was pretty warped. And what I did is I siliconed a piece of Plexi on the bottom so it's no longer warped. And this is how it came out. The only thing I'm not real happy with is the filter. It's a great filter. I just want something that's less less splash I like kind of like the splash for the moisture but a little less splash I still want the small waterfall this one is just way too strong for this size tank and unless it's aimed right at the trunk of the tree it's gonna push away all the the substrate and you can see how much water is being thrown up this is the start and it's holding water now and not only that I got a couple of different ferns that I put up top because I know they like high moisture as well as one of my Hoya cuttings so let me go get my musk turtle how about you can you see this he's so tiny So I put him up here in his basking station, although there's many different spots throughout the whole terrarium where he will be able to um, get up out of the water. I've got several logs in there, several rocks in there. So pretty much anywhere he goes, if he wants to get to the top, he can t get to the top. This is a heat light. This is a UVB light. So I have both. I don't have a heater in here because this room in itself is 80 degrees because I'm in my reptile den and there are so many UVB, UVA bulbs, heat bulbs, 
it, this room is just very warm and the air conditioner duct has been turned off. So I'm not worried about the temperature of the water. And on top of this palindarium, I have UVB lights and UVA lights for them to bask if they choose. I'm not a big basking turtle, but if he wants to, he certainly can. And I say he, I, I don't know what he is yet. He's still very little, but we'll take a closer look at this later. So thanks guys. Thanks for checking out my turtle palindarium. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're looking to have an Eastern musk turtle, it's an absolutely amazing pet to have. Just remember, it's a lifetime pet. It can live up to 50 years old. So thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. Na, na, hey, everybody, it's Susie Q. So come along with me. Said I'm Susie Q.